traditional works of art that we are used to. What I think is really exciting for Bangladesh is that you have these two great neighbors, and even, let's say, Indonesia and further west in uh, the Middle East, to basically learn from their lessons. Um, I still think the whole region is still in its early stages, but for instance in China, the diplomats played a very big role um, in the early 80s because at that time, China was not as it is today, it was much more uh, repressive. And they did not, they felt very threatened by art and the artists did not really have any market so they went to diplomats, and diplomats tended to collect their work. And of course, this shifted, and I think one of the, the uh, one of the things that really hindered Chinese art at one time was this over reliance on uh, foreign collectors or expats. And this, in the way that India had a very strong domestic market, mm -hmm. and, and so Bangladesh would be really wise for one to develop both international and domestic support for artists. Um, the other thing which one could look at is how basically impoverished India and China are for institutions. I mean, you do have a wonderful private museum, two of them in, in Delhi, um, run by private individuals. In China, all museums, basically public and private, are for rent and for hire. So that makes one very skeptical when they go into a museum, not quite understanding where the show is originating from. If there are vested interests, because a gallery has rented out the space. And I, that's why I really think that people should support scholarship, an independent scholarship that's not backed by financial interests. Um, and I think Debbie, uh, our foundation, for instance, they really encourage the curators to go out and, and think and do research about their collection and, and how to grow that collection um, and work independently away from the market. So I think um, in the other side, in, in the Middle East, in West Asia, you have the opposite situation where there are basically no artists in places like the UAE or Qatar, but they have these incredible treasure troves. Um, and one of our editors, when we were invited to give writing workshops um, at the Museum of Modern Art in Doha, because there is no tradition of art writing or even thinking about art that they're looking at. Um, and it's, I think it's a difficult thing to even think about art when you can't even interact with an artist, because this is a constant dialogue. And I think actually at the end of the day, most artists, why they create is to communicate communicate something. It doesn't necessarily have to be political, it can be something personal, it could be something very abstract. And I think this is one of the things that I think Bangladesh could encourage us. And I think the Dhaka Art Summit was quite amazing thing in which they invited galleries and also these independent artist-run spaces all under one roof. And a number of people mentioned this last night that it was the first time that the community was unified. So, I have one more question for Patik, since yes. you are uh, representing Naeem. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of um, uh, photography here, mm -hmm. which uh, is of incredible quality. Yes, yes. Um, and you see phot photographs from anywhere in the world, and these stand for themselves. Mm -hmm. Where do you see that going? And how do you think you, as a neighboring country, I'm very close by in Calcutta, um, can be more involved here. Um, I know uh, you have brought your gallery program to uh, meet okay. and give it out to the artists yes. here, but and how would you... A couple of yeah. Yes, and how would you want them to approach you, and what would you want to tell them? Okay. Uh, to answer your first question, yes, the, uh, I saw uh, quite a lot of things yesterday, and um, the photography as a medium is um, is a very exciting medium for us as well as I think uh, a lot of the artists uh, can, can do a lot of things with photography and uh, it's got tremendous potential. Uh, and um, the material available in our part of the world to work with, and especially with photography, because Naeem works with photographs and texts and uh, we, we represent them from the very beginning of uh, our gallery. 
Um, and we've seen how his career has slowly built over uh, the last few years. Um, now he's thankfully into a, a lot of survey exhibitions, uh, primarily because, for example, he works in a very political context, but he's able to pick up the material which is which is which this country and India and mm -hmm. Pakistan or China is vibrant with, which is sometimes not available to um, say uh, I mean now available because of the Arab Spring etc. So much can be said in <coughs> my eyes. Um, to some other um, places, regions, regions. And that material um, can be expressed in multiple forms in media, whether it's photography, video, installations, performances. Um, and um, I think there's a huge potential for that from this part of the world. Um, um, coming back to the second question, um, for me, maybe 60% of my time goes in looking at what I can see, what I can see, I mean, uh, whatever, how much, how much art I can see. So um, I am uh, constantly uh, looking at new artists, new works, and uh, there's, this is something that we do actively uh, to build a program. And I'm hopeful that maybe in the near future we'll be able to have more artists from from Bangladesh in our program. Yeah. That's great. I, I hope there are enough artists here sitting in the audience listening to this. Mm -hmm. um, before we open uh, the panel to the audience, I have one more question to you as one of the patrons of Bangladeshi Art Contemporary Art here. Uh, if you could tell us a little about public art here, uh, do you see public art on the streets? Because um, we took some pictures from the art fair and there's a lot of sculptures which is running in the background there. there are some great sculptures, there's some great installations that we were exposed to uh, since yesterday. Where do you think this is going to go? Do you think the government or will be involved with the museum actually make space for, let's say, the umbrella installation that is sitting outside? Where, where is the future of this kind of art in a public space in Bangladesh? In fact, uh, you know, Dhaka city is a 400-year-old city. But, um, um, and it also has a history of, uh, you know, having great artisans like, you know, goldsmiths, silversmiths, muslin. We all know about them. But here, um, when you look at the government initiative, I mean, we don't have any art museum as of today. Uh, there's only. Uh, in our national museum, there's a room designated uh, for display of paintings, but there's not a single painting which is 100 year old, unfortunately. But we do have a history of what we call scroll painting. You know, those scroll painting was done on favorites, like you know, hundreds of years ago. But we don't see them. I mean, we have lost them. Uh, and as far as the display of artwork. Uh, you know, sculpture um, by government initiative, I see there's a bit of hesitation. As I told you in the beginning, that, that sometimes a modern sculpture or something, you know, could be treated as uh, uh, anti-religion, unfortunately. But I think we are coming out of it. You know, when you go, uh, as you land Hakka Airport, and the first roundabout, if I can give you a history, there was some installation and overnight that was broken and that disappeared. It remained like that uh, for almost six months and then we found something very neutral. Uh, so we are going through a phase and I think we will overcome this because the energy of, as Elaine said, you know, creative artwork needs freedom. Without freedom you cannot get the space. And I think we are going ahead, we are marching ahead. And we will definitely prevail, we will conquer, because I always say the good will always prevail over the evil force. And, and this is a good energy, good force. And I think five, ten years from now, you'll see many places outside, you know, public places where you'll see many nice artwork. 
thought you were going to say outside of Dhaka as well. Yes, so outside Dhaka as well. Because Dhaka is a, is a huge city. Yes. And one of the challenges, I think, for any uh, large pieces is that just, it's, you know, it's just it's it's, space. It's, it's, yeah. So where do you put public is, or art? It's going to have to go up because down is, is, uh, uh, yes. is, is almost filled. I think that, that artists have been very creative here Absolutely. in terms of finding public spaces. I think mean, Khan is in the audience and other people who have been able to do that. But um, in terms of who owns the spaces, that's again where you, your original comment on the private sector and being able to use those spaces and maybe you know, with or without government uh, funding. Um, I think that that's a big one. And then also getting it outside of DACA, yes. where there would be a great hunger.